I think now I've settled in and feel positive again and also ready, you know, like to motivate others and to help others. I want to jump off the couch now and say, yes, we can do it. Another fantastic guest with us today. She is an Ironman winner posting one of the fastest ever Ironman times in her debut long distance race. Welcome, Laura Philip. Thanks, Till. Hi, everyone. I'm really, really surprised to actually see that it still looks like a living room um, because <laughs> you have one of the geekiest, most detail-oriented coaches who happens to be your husband as well. And I, I expected that he turned the entire house into some form of remote triathlon training playground for you by now. No, actually, um, I have the cellar for my training. <laughs> so if I have to do the work, he puts me down in there, closes the door and leaves me alone. But yeah, we try to keep our living room um, uh, like it's the no triathlon zone. You were actually here with us in Girona um, when the whole lockdown situation started. I think literally you left on Saturday morning sort of in a, in a hurry. And Saturday night, we locked everything down here. Um, so you exactly. left just I think in good we time. left after you texted us. <laughs> um, maybe you better leave tonight. So um, <laughs> that, <laughs> and yeah, we took this very serious, and uh, we thought if there's a place where we would like to be in quarantine, this is of course our home. How how did you deal with it? You you came here for like a final push, a really solid training block, and then basically heading to I'm in South Africa. Like, how were the first days for you realizing, I actually don't know what's coming now. How do I train? What are we doing now? Yeah, of course, um, it's, it was a tough time, but um, it was tough for everyone in a different way. Um, I mean, I kind of prepared myself for this situation. I mean, we saw things coming, you know, when you watch the news and you saw how everything developed around the world, it was kind of foreseeable that it will also um, come to Spain and come to Germany and will have a big impact on our races, of course. And um, it was also before uh, we had the final call from Ironman that they will um, also postpone the uh, Arm in South Africa that I, that I made the decision for myself that I wouldn't fly there because you know South Africa is a country they have so much more problems than we do and for me it simply felt wrong to go there just to you know for a sporting competition event and uh, to maybe be the person that brings the coronavirus over there and um, so that was why it was maybe a little bit easier for me because I already had this uh, decision made up in my mind um, that I wouldn't fly there. Even as a pro, I mean, it is very important for me because it's my job. It's my opportunity to earn money, to like show, um, like to work for my sponsors and all of this. But um, at the end, the most important thing is uh, to be healthy and um, to be respectful to others it sounds like a really healthy healthy mindset but you mentioned the sponsors in there as well how's the communica communication with the sponsors now it's like at the end of the day sponsors live of your exposure as well um are there new plans being made what else can we do instead of racing or what's the situation there um the first company um of my sponsors that i had uh, that i felt that really had to deal with it was castelli who are based in uh, italy so, and they had the first big problems. Um, and by, it was already like a few weeks ago when I was not sure if my race suit for South Africa, I was still planning to race, would even make it, you know, if they could produce my race suit. So that was the first um, situation where I realized, oh, wow, this has like a big impact on everything. And um, Right now, I actually try to, um, you know, be creative and um, find ways um, to still do something for my sponsors to help them as well. I mean, I can't go out and race now and I also don't go out for like my training sessions and stuff. I do everything inside of my house. But um, I think also inside of your house, there are ways uh, how you can... Um, 
help your sponsors. Um, I actually like talk to some of them, ask them if there's anything I can uh, do for them right now, like um, produce some uh, videos, some tips for their social media channels. Of course, this is also tough for them, like to um, spread content at the moment because you have to be very sen sensible, you know, like you can't post pictures with like four people running next to each other or riding their bikes or social e pictures because people don't like to see stuff like this right now because we are all in a very different situation. And one of the things you said, you're, you're doing all your sessions inside. How come? Like, what's your reasoning for it? You're in Germany, so theoretically you're still allowed to go outside for training. How, how come you decided for yourself, no, I'm going to do this at home? Just to stay safe, you know. Um, I just don't want to take any risks while riding outside at the moment um, because you know if I have an accident um, and you know the staff in the hospital they have other things to do right now. What does training in, in general look like? So the main problem was that I was so race ready like my form you know we prepared myself in Rirona to race at Ironman South Africa so um, that was actually uh, <laughs> quite sad because I had a very good form and um, now I had just let it go, but I actually used my South Africa form to do some house building stuff. Like um, <laughs> now our house uh, got an update, like I did a lot in the garden and stuff, and I felt pretty strong for that kind of work. So that was good. Um, but uh, yeah, actually I thought it would be smart to do a little break, not like a full season break, but like a little break just to you know, also give my mind uh, the time to adjust to this new situation. And then I had a long talk uh, with my coach, um, Philip, and, um, you know, we, we just discussed how we would continue with my training. And for us, it makes the most sense to just, uh, for the next few weeks, um, we will just train like uh, I would be still in winter, you know, like preparing for the season. Right now, the most challenging part is that we don't know when we will be able to race again. But I prepare myself that it will be not weeks, but months. So right now, I focus um, to, you know, build my strengths up more. Like, I don't focus on race-specific stuff, but more on endurance rides, for example, and runs. And then I do very short and high-intense intervals to lift my maximum uh, power and capacity would you rather lose an entire season and then start next year normally or rather race into winter and kind of not have a winter break this year and then head into 2021 well right now i would just love to race you know as much as possible i feel there's so much energy inside of me especially because i had like a very short season last year due to an injury i just saw the other day on your channel you, you got your own socks now very yes. <laughs> happy looking socks out there spreading the love with them where are they in your girona quarantine lockdown i think you definitely need some of these socks too so i'll I'm show telling you, to you. Even if, like clouds and rain today there isn't even sunshine coming in the window oh really so this could be your sunshine um so these are the kick ass socks and um i have many motivational items on this one work hard is always important then What's of the, boom? Course, the rocket. Yeah, this is like for Kraboom superpower, you know? <laughs> Explosion. <laughs> Hell yeah. And of course, rocket mode. And um, yeah, Laura Philip edition. Do you have any socks we can raffle off to everybody who's watching the PTO videos to make them happy? Like a pair yeah, or two? Yeah, we could definitely do this. Um, you know, I had this campaign, Socks for Heroes, uh, just a few days ago on Instagram. And I gave away socks for people who keep the community going right now. So like, like people who are in jobs that have to be close with other people. You know, we all try to avoid this right now. But there are, of course, certain jobs who simply can't do it. I was thinking of nurses, doctors, you know, but also the people who work in grocery stores and like... Uh, officers and so on and oh. so on there are many people right now who need superpower and um, i gave away some of those socks and i would also yeah of course we could also um, make a little giveaway to some 
of um, the people who need I'm motivation and superpower. Speaking of superpowers, I think this is the moment where the world needs to learn something new, if there is something. Do you have any hidden talents? I went to a Steiner school, Waldorfschule in German. Um, I don't know if you guys know this. <laughs> and um, yeah, there I learned a lot of uh, yeah, creative stuff. And one thing I did, and I actually put this uh, into my cupboard to motivate me for Ironman South Africa, was uh, this elephant. I made this elephant when I was maybe around 10 years old or something. No way! And, um, yeah, it's cool. What, what's, your, what's your swimming setup right now? I've seen so many funny ones out there. How do you swim at the moment or swim train? <laughs> so um, I had this talk with Philip, my coach, and um, I told him, you know, maybe we just have to relax about the swimming part <laughs> and uh, don't try to do like multiple stretch court, whatever sessions per day. So I think um, until now, I did one stretch court session <laughs> that was 10 minutes long. It makes me so happy to hear that one of the top female pros is replacing swimming with more recovery because that's pretty much been my approach. <laughs> with more time it's for coffee and cake. A hundred percent because my approach since the lockdown started was to replace every bike, run or swim session with more recovery. Thank you so much for taking the time for us. Yeah, thanks too. Thanks everyone for watching. Stay positive, stay motivated, and we will get the chance to kick ass again.